So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to palpate um, the gluteus maximus, the gluteus medius, and the piriformis. So the first thing, it's kind of hard to miss the gluteus maximus. It is the largest uh, posterior muscle. And uh, quite honestly, it's probably the strongest of the single muscles there. So we're going to look at the, we're, we're going to find that iliac crest again. So we're going to come in here, press inward, see it's soft in here. Here's our ribs. And then there's the soft indentation. And here we go. There's the iliac crest. Now, I'm going to move to the middle and up. And here's where we're going to be attaching. And we're looking at right down in here is the gluteus maximus. Okay. So we have the superior. We have the middle. And as we come down, we'll look at the inferior portion. Now, one of the easiest ways to find uh, the gluteus maximus is having her flex it. And the gluteus maximus is... Uh, responsible for hip flexion. I'm sorry, hip extension, hip extension. So don't rotate this leg. I just want you to take this leg and lift it straight. Nope. Keep that straight. And I want you to lift this leg up in the air. There we go. Yep. And there we go. I can feel the contraction right through here and right through here. Now, if she were to rotate this, a mistake that happens if they rotate and try to lift it sideways, you're going to get contraction of uh, the gluteus medius, the minimus, things that are going to be helping to rotate and uh, lift laterally. So we don't want that. We want her to keep her leg straight and lifting straight up. And that way we're going to be able to feel uh, the gluteus. Go ahead and lift up again. And there we go. Right through here and right through here. That's the gluteus maximus. Now we're going to move on to the gluteus medius. Actually, we're, while she's in this position, we're going to look at the piriformis. So for piriformis, we're going to find that iliac crest again. So here, 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 here's the iliac crest. All right. And then we're going to move across to the PSIS, the posterior superior iliac spine. So that's where we're going to follow this line across with our thumbs. Hopefully you can see I'm palpating with my thumb. So I'm taking the iliac crest and following the top across right to here. All right, right there. Now I'm going to find her greater trochanter. She's going to just very turn that heel a little bit. Yeah, just watch the tripod there. There you go. Turn it some more. Good. Keep going. Turn that heel in and out. All right, there we go. So I'm going to draw a line from that greater trochanter. Do it again one more time. Yep. Here we go, right here. So I'm going to draw a line from the greater trochanter to the PSIS, so if I drew a line from there to there, that's where the piriformis is going to be. Now, it's right inside here. It's, it lays inferior to the, um, the gluteus maximus, so it's sometimes hard to feel all on its own. Um, now, what, I, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my elbow here, and I'm gonna try to rub my elbow across the muscle, inferior, to superior so i'm going to come in here and i'm going to just rub it across and see if i can feel it as i'm in here so piriformis right in there okay now i have bony elbows as she was flinching a little bit because she probably <laughs> felt my bony elbows um so if i want to get a better feel for what the piriformis is doing it's good for external rotation so I'm going to have her turn her toes to the outside and turn her entire leg, not just her uh, tibia, but I want her to turn her entire. Yes, there we go. So I'm going to put my elbow in there. She's going to turn her leg in and out. And there we go. I can feel the piriformis flexing uh, inside there. All right, so that's how we're going to find the piriformis. All right, next thing we're going to be looking at is the gluteus medius, and I'm going to have uh, Tara lay on her side. And first thing I'm going to locate is that mm -hmm. iliac crest again. So we have, there's her ribs, there's where it indents soft, and you can almost see that just in the video. You can see her iliac crest right there. Um, she's not a, she's pretty thin, so it's pretty easy to locate her iliac crest. Now I'm going to keep my fingers on the iliac crest, and I'm going to work my thumb down to the PSIS, 
posterior superior iliac spine. And there we are right there. All right, so I'm going to move a little bit anteriorly and inferiorly, and I'm going to get in here. So this is where the origin of the gluteus medius is, so right through here. And what the gluteus medius, one of the things that it's going to do, it's going to help her lift her leg, uh, ad, adduct, I'm sorry, abduct, abduct her leg away. So uh, she's going to A-B duck, so she's going to lift her leg up in the air, and there we go. So if I palpate in here, go ahead and down and relax, good, and up, yep, I can feel the contraction right in here, and down, and up, and down, and the gluteus uh, uh, medius is not the only muscle responsible there um, for doing the adduction. Uh, but I can feel the gluteus medius contracting. Go ahead and do it again. Right in there. I can feel the contraction right in there. And that's how we're going to find the gluteus medius. So what we're going to do with Tara... So what we're going to do with Tara now is we're going to, we're going to test uh, with a handheld dynamometer. We're going to test her external rotation of the hip and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have her um, on her own. She's going to bring her leg out a little bit, and she's going to bring it in as far as she can and hold it. And have her do it a couple times. Any pain? No. Feel good? Looks like she has good range of motion, so she passes the fair test. Um, so I'm going to hold this handheld dynamometer. The one thing I have to worry about with a handheld dynamometer like this is I have to make sure that I don't move and push back and forth with her. I don't want to get into a, a pushing and shoving contest because that's going to affect the measurements. And if you look at it on a graph, you'll see it go up and down like uh, shark teeth. And we don't want that. We want to have a good solid reading. I would uh, generally use uh, a different type of dynamometer that does, you don't have to deal with that. But um, I just need to make sure I am holding my elbow to my side and I'm an unmovable brick wall. So we're going to keep her, her and I'm going to, Take this dynamometer, and I'm going to put it right at our medial malleolus, right just a little bit superior to that, so I have a nice flat surface. So it's important to make sure that um, whoever's doing this test in your notes, you put that you're doing it in the same position each time. So I'm going to position myself here. I don't know how strong her external rotators are, but I'm going to put it here. I'm going to put my elbow in the side. I'm going to put my hand here to support her. And she's going to bring her, I'm going to have it right there. And she's going to bring that foot toward me. Now, what, what's going to happen is when I press the button and say go, I'm going to say five seconds. I'm going to say push, 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 push. She's going to push as hard as she can for five seconds. And I'll say relax. And then we'll have our measurements. We're going to do that three separate times. I'm not going to demonstrate three separate times. Do it three separate times. And we're going to want to get results that are about five, no more than 5% away. If, we, if we're more than 5% away, it means we probably messed up or um, we need to get an accurate measure. So those measurements should be close if she's given it her all, um, all three times. So I'm going to support her here. I'm going to put this just superior on her uh, la uh, medial malleolus. If I said a lateral, I'm going to say medial malleolus right here. And I'm going to hold it right here. And I'm going to say, ready? You're going to bring your foot toward me. My elbow is pinned. I'm going to make sure I'm an immovable wall, and I'm going to say, go, push, 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 and relax. There we go. And I would repeat that process. I would look on the phone. This one actually connects to a phone. Um, and um, I would read the meeting, and I would do it two more times. So again, I would go right here. I would support at the knee, and I'm going to make sure my elbow is immovable. I don't want to get into a pushing contest with her. And I'm going to say, ready, and go. Push, 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 push. Now, notice uh, some of the com compensation she made. She wanted to push so bad, she started kicking forward. And that's something you got to look out at, that they're not making compensations, that they're not leaning their upper body to get more force. You're testing one thing. You're ter testing external rotation. So if she is compensating by moving her upper body, if she is kicking forward, um, I'm going to throw that test out and we're going to test again. I'm going to make sure we get a, a good, clean test each time. Um, and uh, that is how we are going to um, test in uh, external rotation of the, uh, of the hip.
Hi, Dan Dixon, Impact Fitness and Martial Arts, and I'm here today with Tara. And what we're going to look at today is we're going to look at um, uh, we're going to look at her hip flexor. We're going to do manual muscle testing on her hip flexors. And what we're going to do is we're going to have her put her hands behind her a little bit. I'm going to have her do the fair test first, just to make sure there's no pain or any limitations, and she can do it actively on her own. Go ahead and lift that knee all the way up. Good and down, and do it again. Go ahead, lift all the way up. And down any pain or limitations there feels good so now we're good to go ahead and do manual muscle testing this is called a break test and uh, she's going to lift that just off the table and i'm going to push down trying to get her to fail and trying to get her to uh to break the position i'm going to say hold 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 and she's going to try to hold it as good as she can we're going to see how how uh how strong she is there so she's going to put her hands behind her I'm going to support her. She's going to lean back just a little bit just to get a little more, put her hips in just a little bit better position. I'm going to support her right behind her shoulder. And I'm going to put my hand distally on her femur. I'm going to try to line it right up with the most distal part of her femur and in line with her tibia. So I'm, I have the force right down in here. So she's going to go ahead and lift that up. I'm going to have her come down just a little bit, just a little bit off the table. She's going to hold it right there. I'm going to tell her to hold, hold, hold. And I'm going to try to break her position and see how strong she is. So on three, one, two, three, hold, 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 good. And I'm gonna rate her, any pain there? No pain. She felt very strong, very strong hip flexors. So I'm gonna rate her a five on the scale. Um, actually, normal function, no pain. I'm gonna give her a five.